Hey guys, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. So today I'm going to be installing a charge pipe on my 2015 WRX. I wish I had more videos to show you guys of actually building the car because I've done a bunch of bolt-ons. Um, as many of you probably know, these cars make about 260 um, to the crank from the factory. So basically what I've done to my car is done an ETS cold air intake, an AIG, TGV, and EGR delete. I have Killer Bee headers and a J-pipe, and then I have a parent cat back exhaust. Um, I'm making like just under 350 horsepower to the wheels. Obviously, I also have a Cobb um, access port and I've gotten it tuned. Once you do the J-pipe and that kind of stuff, the headers, TGV delete, those kind of things, you need a tune. Cold air intake, you're fine. Cat back exhaust, you're fine. You do not need a tune if you're doing this charge pipe though. I just wanna make that clear. Any car that has a MAF sensor, if you're altering like a charge pipe that comes after the MAF sensor, you don't need to get a tune. This is fine to install in your car and not get a tune. But anything more than that, you definitely wanna get a tune. You're gonna risk blowing the motor up. But anyways, I just put a Perrin Hyper Teal charge pipe in. So let me show you how it's done. First, what you wanna do is remove the two air intake clips. Next, what you want to do is remove the two bolts holding the cooling fan in place. You want to be careful tightening these back down because if you over tighten them, it will crack the plastic housing holding them in place. That's why I stopped using the, the electric ratchet was because it puts too much stress on the nut that that's held in place by the plastic bracket and it can crack the plastic and then it won't hold the nut for these bolts anymore. Next what you want to do is remove the cooling fan. There's a connector on the bottom you have to just undo. Then you want to undo this hose clamp. Then you want to undo the two 12 millimeter bolts that hold the charge pipe flange on. Next, you want to take off these two hoses just to get them out of the way. Then you have to undo the hose clamp on the bottom of the blow-off valve. So I wanted to just show you a picture of the blow up valve because it's kind of hard to explain and see in there. So there's three hoses that come off of it, one of which goes to the charge pipe. This is the connection where the blow up valve goes into the charge pipe. You're going to have to remove the blow up valve from this piece on the original charge pipe and pull it out. Don't be concerned when it takes you a lot of force, you're not going to break it. It does take a lot of force. I really had to pry on this thing to pull it out. Out with the old. When you're putting the new parent flange on for the charge pipe, you need to reuse your old gasket from the original charge pipe flange. It goes on with two 12 millimeter bolts that they supply you with brand new ones.
in with the new. Make sure you face the head of the hose clamp outward so they're easier to get to. You're not hanging over the engine bay trying to tighten those down. Make sure all the hose clamps on the blowout valve and both ends of the charge pipe are tight. Make sure you do the connector on the bottom of the cooling fan and also make sure that the cooling fan lines up in the two bottom slots that its housing sits in. I wish I had a before video to show you guys of how the car sounded before I put the charge pipe in because 
before with just the stock intercooler pipe, charge pipe, you could hear the car actually intaking all of that air from the intake. And then it would kind of like, you could hear it getting like stuck in, you know, getting forced into the motor, into the intercooler. It, it kind of had this like sucking noise that uh, it wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad thing. It just, it was sucking in a lot more air from the cold air intake. And then it couldn't push all of that air into the charge pipe and into the intercooler. So with this larger charge pipe on there, it can suck a lot more of that air in there. Um, down the road, I'm gonna be getting a front mounted intercooler, which will eliminate a lot of that problem. It'll be a lot closer to the turbo. Um, you'll be able to force a lot more air in there, obviously. So anyways, let me show you how this sounds and take you for a ride. You guys ready? <laughs> Make sure to like and subscribe. Hopefully this video helped you. See you guys next time.